Hi everyone, and welcome back to this RPG Maker MZ Beginners Tutorial. In our last tutorial, we went over the interface of the RPG Maker MZ engine. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over making your first level. In the RPG community, levels are called maps. And if you love RPG Maker tips, tricks, tutorials, and just general discussion about RPG Maker, then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. To make a new map, you want to go onto the left hand side of the screen where it says the name of your game and the current maps. We're currently on map 001. What we want to do is right click here and go new and that's going to bring up this screen where we can name our map. So we'll call this world map and then we can have the display name for our map. So we're just going to call it Gaia. Underneath that you get to choose the different tile sets. Each different tile set is built for a different map. So the overworld is built for world maps. Outside is built for towns and forests and the like. Inside is built for interiors like houses and castles. Dungeons is built for caves and sewers. And SF outside and SF inside just means sci-fi outside and sci-fi inside. So it's a different tile set that's more futuristic. For this one we're just going to click overworld and then we've got our height and width. So for width we're just going to make that 30 and height we're going to make that 30. What that means is that there's 30 tiles up and 30 tiles across and that's squared. We'll get more into tiles in just a little bit. Underneath it you have your encounter rate. So you can set an average number of steps before you run into a random encounter. So if you want every 30 tile movements, the player might run into a fight, you can set that to 30, you can set that to 50. Or if you have zero encounters, you can just leave it as is, because in order to have an encounter, over here on the right hand side, you need to select an encountered troop. And a troop is just a group of enemies which you can fight. Now at the moment, we're not going to have any enemies on this map. But if we did want enemies every 50-ish steps, we could go over here to Encounters, double-click on Troop, and then choose the different monsters we want. We'll get into that in another video. Underneath it, you've got your background music. So that auto-plays some background music whenever you're on this map. One of my favourite ones is Field 2. And we can just lower the volume a bit. So I've selected Field 2, we'll hit OK. Now, whenever we're on the world map, Field 2 is going to play. Background sound is like sound effects. So if it was raining, you could have a rain sound effect. If it was a night time, you could have a night sound effect. So on and so forth. Now you can disable dashing by clicking this check mark. Because it's a world map, we do want to disable dashing. Then we can specify a battle back. So by doing this, Whenever we run into an enemy, we can select what the different background's going to be for when we're fighting. So being the world map, we're going to make it grassland and grassland. Now a parallax background we'll get into in another video, but what you can do is if you haven't painted any tiles on your map, you can have this show up in the very background. Now that we've got that all out of the way, we're going to hit OK. And over on the left hand side, you can see we've still got map 1, but now we can swap over to map 2. So to start the map, what we want to do is go over here where we've got the Events tab and the Mapping tab, and we just want to make sure we're on the Mapping tab. Then we're going to select this water tile, click the Fill button, and fill the area in. And then we're going to zoom out a bit so we can see it all. Now we want to swap over to the Pencil tool and select a Grass tile, and we're just going to draw a small little world map island. And then we're going to use the Fill tool to fill that in. We've also got some mountains, so we can paint in some mountain ranges. And anything that's not filled in, we can fill in. We've got some tree tiles, so you can place some forests down on your map. If you drag it around, and if you singly click somewhere, you can place single trees. We'll make a small pine forest over here. There's quite a small range of different little things we can do to make the map look a bit better over here, so we're just going to surround this light water with some deep water. And fill that all in. So now we have the landscape of our first world map. 
what we're going to do is down here where we've got A, B and C tiles, we're going to click on to B. And this gives us a range of different items that we can put on the world map. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a town by clicking that, dragging it across so it selects both. And now you can see we can place two tiles down. If we did this one which is four tiles, we click, drag, and now we can place a four tile item down. A single tile is the distance a character can move. So if your character was here and you press the up button, he would move up by one single tile. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a town just down on the map, right up here by the coast. And then further in the middle, we're just going to place a castle. Moving back over to the A tile, something you can do is create a path between the town and the castle. And you can even have that path going through a forest if you like. Now if we wanted the main character to start on this world map, what we'd do is we'd swap over to the events tab, which is this button right here, and then find a spot on the map and then right click. Then we want to go set starting position, player. And now you can see that when we start the game and hit new game, the player is going to start right here. So we'll show that to you right now. There we go, in the top left you can see Gaia was the display name, and now we can walk around our world map. We can't actually enter into any of the towns or cities yet, so that's what we'll be going over next. We want to make it that when the player walks over these tiles here, that they get transported to a different level or a different map. And that's going to be a town. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the left, right click on world map and go new. And then we're going to name it. So we'll call this town one because it's right next to the sea. We're going to change the height and width to 20 by 20 and we'll change the tile set. Currently we're on the world map tile set or the overworld tile set. This time we want to use the outside tile set. Then we'll set some background music. And once all of this is good, we're not going to disable dashing because they're going to be in a town now, so we want them to be able to dash around. Once all this is set up, we're just going to hit OK. And it's going to load up a brand new map for us. Now we're still on the events tab, we want to switch back over to the mapping tab and we'll scroll out so we can see it all. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this green grass tile and fill the entire screen up. Over here we've got a fence, so what we can do is going over to the rectangle tile, we can do a fence all the way around the town. And because this is on the beach, we'll just create a little beach over here and then fill that in. And then we can simply bring the fence all the way back up again. We can also create a path that runs throughout the town, so we'll just make a road right up the center. And then some paths branching off to the side. Now we can make some houses. So select any one of these wall tiles, and we're just going to go three across. And then we'll grab this roof tile right above it and make it two down and three across. And there we have a house. So we're just going to fill up the rest of this map with different houses. Now at the moment you can't really get into these houses, so we're going to swap over to the B tab and select one of these little black boxes over here. These are doors. So I'm going to select this one here and click in the middle of each of these houses. And later on we'll put an event where you can walk through a door and go to a different level. Then we just want to find some windows and we're just going to put windows on all of these houses. If you've got different shops in your town, you can put these signs above them. The item shop, the inn, the weapon shop. And throughout this B tab and this C tab, there is a range of different items you can use to decorate your town. So one of the things we'll do is we'll just use these tree tiles to decorate the outside, and then we can use some trees in the town as well. There's lots of different grass types you can use, flowers you can place sporadically, and even piles of wood that they can have next to their homes. These are all just little details that'll help you make your map or your level look better. Now that we've done that, we want to be able to move from the world map here into 
this town here. So how do we do that? First we want to switch from the mapping tab over to the event tab. Then what we want to do is right click on the town and hit quick event creation. Then we want to select transfer and it's going to show up this screen here. Where are we transferring to? We want to transfer from where we are now to the different location which is just right here in town 1. We don't want to put it here because if the player enters and wants to leave they're going to have to move up one and then move down. So we want to place it one tile in and that's where it's going to transfer the player to. And retain just means what direction the player is facing. So if the player walks in we can have them facing down, left, right, up or retain their previous position. Because the path comes in from the bottom we're going to have them always when they enter the town be facing up. And then we just want to copy this by hitting Control c and then Control v over to the next side. So we'll swap back over to town 1 and again do the same thing we're going to right click quick event creation transfer and this time we want to transfer from the location we're in to the world map and we're just going to transfer them onto the path. We're going to hit OK the direction they're going to be facing is down. Then we're just going to copy that event across and then we're going to playtest the game. As you can see we're starting on the world map and when we walk up into the town now we're in the town. If we want to go back out to the world map now we're on the world map again. You'll notice that if I try to go through any of these doors nothing's happening. That's because we haven't yet created the levels or the events to transfer them from one map to another. So just real quickly we're going to create a small house. Go onto town 1 and hit new and instead of outside this time we're going to be using the inside tile set and we'll call this house 1 and the display name will be reed's house. We're not going to change the audio and we're going to disable dashing because it's rude to run around in houses. Once we've created this house we're going to switch back over to the mapping tab Go over to A and you'll notice that we have a different set of tiles that we can use for inside. So I'm just going to get this wooden floor and draw a rectangle like that. Then I'm going to get this wall and we're going to raise that up by two and drag it all the way across. Right above that we're going to grab the roof tile and just go all the way around the map. And then for the entrance to the house we're just going to have a little doorway down here. Now you can play around with this and make different rooms like this and you can have different carpets around as well. You can place a table down with some chairs for people who want to eat. You can place a whole kitchen in here and some windows as well. We'll just finish this one off by putting a bed in the bedroom and a closet. Now moving back over to the town map what we're going to do is flick back over to the events tab and we're going to right click where this door is, go quick event creation and we're going to hit door. Instead of transfer we're going to hit door and where this image is we can change the different types of doors we want to use. So for this house we're just going to use this door right here. Again location, this is where the door is going to transfer the player. So we're going to transfer them into this house. So we'll go to house 1 and again click it one tile into the house. Not right here but one tile in and hit OK. Now that door is going to take us into the house but if we enter that house there's no way for us to leave yet. So we're going to go into the house, quick event creation, transfer the player. We're just going to transfer them outside of the house they just entered, right here. And hit OK. So now if we playtest this one, we're in the world map. Now we've transferred into the town and you can see that door's appeared now. We're just going to enter that door. Now we're in this small little house. If we want to leave the house, we'll just simply leave. And it transfers us back here. 
I hope this tutorial has helped you guys learn about transferring between different levels and as well as creating different levels, or in the RPG Maker world we call them maps. In the next tutorial we're going to be going over how to make NPCs. These are the non-player characters that are going to roam around the world, you'll be able to talk to them, buy from them. So if you're interested in learning more then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.